My name is Karel Moons from the Julius Center of the UMC Utrecht in the Netherlands and also co-convener of Cochrane Prognosis Methods Group. Welcome to this short introduction to effect and performance measures that are used in prognosis studies. These performance measures are used in primary prognosis studies to quantify the overall prognosis of, for example, a certain health condition or disease, or to quantify the predictive or prognostic value of a single prognostic factor or of a combination of factors, which is called a prognostic model. I will first discuss the measures that are relevant to overall prognosis studies, followed by prevailing measures of prognostic factor studies, and finally, of prognostic model studies. For overall prognosis studies, there's typically one measure of specific interest, which is the absolute risk of the outcome in a specific time period in the targeted population. In other words, it's the incidence of the outcome within a pre-specified time period in that population. The cumulative incident is an absolute outcome risk estimate, so it has a value between 0 and 1, or a value between 0% and 100%. Note that the absolute risk does not have a neutral value. What about prognostic factor studies? In prognostic factor studies, researchers typically report the association between the prognostic factor of interest and the index factor and the outcome that occurs in a pre-specified time period in the target population. A prognostic factor can be dichotomous, yes, no, it can be categorical with more than two categories, or continuous like blood pressure. The association between the index factor and the outcome can be crude or unadjusted, but it can also be adjusted. Adjusted means that the association between the index prognostic factor and the outcome is corrected for the contribution by other prognostic factors. In case there are short-term outcomes, researchers tend to use risk ratios or odds ratios, and for longer term outcomes, they typically use time to event analysis and present hazard ratios. All ratios range between zero and infinite, and their interpretation is exactly the same as we're used to from intervention and causal studies. The neutral value or the point of no effect of these ratios is one. What about prognostic model studies? In primary prognostic model studies, we are interested in the extent to which a combination of prognostic factors that are combined in a so-called prognostic model accurately predicts a specific outcome in a specific time period in the targeted population. The two main parameters to quantify the performance of a prognostic model are calibration and discrimination. And both parameters are ideally not estimated from the same data as from which the model is developed, because that commonly shows too optimistic predicted performance, but they are rather estimated from new data, which is data that was not used to develop the model. Let us first look at calibration. Calibration reflects the agreement between the probability of the outcome as predicted by the model versus the true observed outcome probability or frequency in the data set at hand. Calibration measures are important to report in a review of prognosis studies because they provide us the information about how correct a prediction model is. It tells us whether the prediction model overestimates or underestimates the true outcome risk. And calibration can be presented in several ways. The most common ways are the observed versus expected ratio, the OE ratio, and the other one is the calibration plot together with the calibration slope. In this slide or on this slide, you see a typical example of a calibration plot. On the y-axis, you see the true observed outcome probabilities or frequency. And on the x-axis, you see the model's predicted probability. This is represented in this case for 10 subgroups D size of the studied population. The red line in the figure indicates the so-called calibration slope, which is drawn through the 10 individual points. The calibration slope is ideally one, because then all the points are exactly on a diagonal and the observed and predicted probabilities exactly match. However, the calibration slope can take values between minus infinity to plus infinity. In this figure, the calibration slope had a value of 0.39. Values below 1 indicate the prediction model is overfitted, meaning, as you can see, that low predicted probabilities are too low on the left side, and high predicted probabilities are too high on the right side, as compared to the true outcome frequencies. If we calculate here the overall observed versus expected outcome ratio based on these results, the authors found a value of 1.35. This means that on average, the predicted outcome risk is 0.3 times 0.35 times lower compared to the observed outcome frequency. So on average, the model underestimates the true probability of the outcome. 
Ideally, the OE ratio has a value of one, meaning that the number of predicted and observed events are equal. However, it can take values ranging from zero to infinity. And please note that the total OE ratio gives only limited information about the overall calibration of the model. Because take a good look at the plots. We see there that there are also groups of individuals in which the model does not underestimate the risk, but even overestimates in the right part. Therefore, it is preferred to present calibration in the form of a calibration plot and report the calibration slope with the confidence interval. The OE ratio is often easier to calculate, though, and more often reported in prognostic model studies and can therefore more often be used in a meta-analysis. Let's now look at discrimination of a model. Discrimination of a prognostic model refers to the ability of the model to distinguish between people with the outcome versus people without the outcome in the specific time period in the targeted population. Discrimination is always quantified using the C, not always, but typically quantified using the C statistics. Its formal meaning of the C statistic is that of all pairs in the data set of persons with versus without the outcome, the C statistic reflects the proportion of pairs that the model indeed assigns a higher predicted probability to the person with the outcome. The C statistic ranges between zero and one. A value of 0.5 means that the model is as good as flipping a going. A value of one means that the model has perfect discrimination between those with the outcome versus without the outcome. The C statistic can be estimated from time to, for time to event models, but also for logistic regression models. And for logistic regression prediction models, the C statistic is exactly the same as the area on the receive operating characteristic plots. I thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye.